Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to William B. Travis High School in Austin, Texas, where we've got some more Trojan basketball coming up in just about seven minutes here. Jack Farrell joining you here tonight for another district game for the Trojans who enter at 17 and eight overall on the season and four and zero in district play. Their opponent, the Rebels of Travis High School, they enter at one and 14, but they have been ravaged with uh, with some COVID issues and within this program, and they are down to uh, just eight players here tonight. Two of them they had to pull up off of the freshman team, so. This Travis team is not at full strength, but they do enter tonight at 1-14. They are 0-4 in district play uh, to start off the season, and they come in here shorthanded tonight. So Anderson looking for an opportunity to get out ahead early and get some of those bench players in to get them some more run, to get them some more experience as we move down the stretch into the season and we start thinking about some postseason play. Trojans enter off of a win. We were there for that one on Tuesday evening. It was a very hectic game against the uh, against Lockhart. Anderson able to pick up a victory in that game. However, was a little bit closer than I think that they anticipated entering. They won it by a score of 69 to 53. Jock Gully, uh, an all district caliber player, racked up 37 against the Trojans in that game. It was a game uh, in which Anderson had to find scoring from some unorthodox places. Jack Francis there, one of their two leading scorers alongside Bennett Blackerby was sidelined for much of that game with foul trouble. He really only ended up playing what felt like about six or seven minutes. He still did tally seven points, but big nights from Bennett Blackerby and Mike Wagner, 17 points and 15 points respectively, really carried the Trojans to a victory against Lockhart. Mitchell Whitlow also in the past couple games has uh, been finding his touch uh, when it comes to scoring. He scored 12 in the win against Northeast last Friday, and he scored eight in the win against Lockhart. So Mitchell always providing some good defense in the starting lineup, some uh, smart plays. Also adding to his point total a little bit more uh, over these past few games. And that's always a boost for Anderson as this team is excellent defensively, but can find itself struggling on offense from time to time. However, they will be at full strength tonight. It looks like Colin Page will have to sit out. He was in uh, getting going in warmups, but you can tell there's a little bit of an issue that is bothering him. So without their free safety and defensive stopper, however, it might not be a big deal tonight as Travis is also coming in incredibly shorthanded. So they've, uh, looks like they're up to nine players. I believe they have uh, seven varsity players and two freshmen in on the team now. So still slim pickings on the Travis bench. They don't uh, have a JV game tonight as a result of all of these issues, although I don't believe that Travis this season is fielding a JV team as we have moved the start times of both of these games uh, against Travis, the one here and the one at home, up for, uh, from 8 o'clock to 7 o'clock. But in the meantime, we want to go ahead and take a look at the district standings as we are about a quarter of the way through the district slate. Anderson, of course, is tied for first place. They are 4-0. Crockett, the only other team right there with them, they're 4-0. Uh, McCallum, Northeast, Lassa, and Lockhart all sit at 2-2. Two two. The only uh, winless teams so far are Travis and Navarro. But now with McCallum, I believe they've got Travis here tonight, so that should be an interesting one to go ahead and check the score on after our game's here. That one getting started at 8 p.m., so that'll be winding down once we finish. But just looking on the, these two sides of the court, Anderson uh, is, a, is a large team as is, and they're very deep. But if you look over at Travis, there's, they just have far fewer bodies here tonight. But... Crockett, the only team uh, that is tied with Anderson, that undefeated record <clears throat> in District 4-0. Crockett is 10-15, and 15, Anderson is 17-8. and eight. So the Trojans uh, hanging on to the 
winning record overall as well as in district play. The only other team actually that is above 500 in this district is Northeast. Anderson, of course, uh, a week ago today was over at their place picking up a victory, although it was a pretty hectic game. 16-10 is their record. Trojans are 17 and eight as we previously mentioned, but we've got about 90 seconds before we get ready to go here. Looking for a bounce back game from Francis after not playing much, although he probably won't play much tonight either uh, if Anderson can get the job done and get out to that early lead that they are hoping for. Nate Langley continues to have an excellent season, another double figure scoring game for him uh, on Tuesday along with Blackerby and Wagner. As Bennett came off the bench, that's a, it's a little bit of an unusual role for him. He came off the bench and he still shined, didn't mess with his rhythm at all, still just an absolute sharpshooter for this Trojan team and a key member of their backcourt. And has shown the ability that he can even lead some bench units as the uh, as a lead ball handler, which is very big for Anderson. As they have plenty of guys that can drill, but orchestrating an offense and running the show is a, is a whole different animal. But we are good to go. 7.30 start here in Austin, down south. Making the trip down here. And with COVID restrictions, not a lot of uh, fans allowed in the stands here tonight. However, we should be able to uh, attend all of these games and uh, be able to broadcast all these games throughout the rest of the season. So that should not affect where we're at. Uh, but it does affect how how many uh, fans of the general public can uh, can attend. But that means we've probably got a lot of extra viewership on the broadcast tonight, so welcome. And we are gonna go ahead and send it down to the court for the National Anthem, I believe. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, we will be right back for the start of the game. We are ready to go. Anderson versus Travis is getting ready to go right now. 
it will be Anderson's usual starting lineup, of course, tonight. They are rocking the alternates. Got the black, or the, uh, the gray jerseys. Still with the yellow outline, of course. Travis wearing the home white. So it's Blackerby, Langley, Whitlow, Wagner, and Francis, as it has been for pretty much every game this season. For Anderson and for Travis, uh, jumping up, uh, through the jump ball here at center court, number double zero, Cody Bryant, number 11, Ronald Sauls, number three, Matthew Santos, number 33, Vincent Mugisha, and inside, oop, to Langley, Langley's first shot's no good, but he's gonna get his own rebound, go back up with it, too strong again, Langley can't clear it away, and now Travis coming the other way, the other starter for them, number 32, Christian Torres, Got to operate off the roster they give me. Not sure if they had any number replacements with uh, their COVID issues, but they got the roster that I was given. And here are the Rebels the other way. At the free throw line, that's Bryant. They swing it over to the wing for Mugisha. Here's Torres on the wing, attacking Blackerby. Gets Blackerby off of him, but he kicks it out to the perimeter. And early, you have no score. Driving in, throwing it up, and being fouled is Sauls. He'll head to the line for two shots. Looks like they're going to get Whitlow on the call there. So first team foul for the Trojans. First shot up and good. He goes two for two. So Travis with the early lead. They've got Blackerby for Anderson. He's going to kick it back outside for Nate. Nate going to fire away. So three quick attempts for Langley. All of them misses. And two to nothing Travis through the first minute of action. Now here come the Rebels. Wagner picking up. Anderson loves to do this trap. It looks like they're going to give him a little bit more space, but here's driving in, throwing up a little off balance. That shot no good from Torres. Now Francis pushing pace for Anderson. Gets around the defender, dumps it off to Whitlow. Mitchell goes up with it. He's fouled, so he'll head to the line for two. Bit of a wonky start here. Anderson with a chance to get on the board here. Looks like Ben Bazarian going to be the first player off the bench for the Trojans as Whitlow knocks down his first free throw. And it looks like Bazarian will be coming in for Whitlow if he hits his free throw. He goes two for two, so Mitchell head out. But a nice start from him. He goes two for two from the line. Now here's Francis picking up on the perimeter. Black will be defending. It's Sauls with it up top. Putting the moves on Black, be able to, but he passes it off to Bryant. Bryant now attacking. He loses it, but he gets free. Bazarian there to try and take the charge, and they're going to call it a blocking foul. So Bazarian whistled for it. He's trying to get a uh, word on what he uh, did wrong there in terms of drawing the charge, but Brian's going to head to the line for the third free throw of the game for Travis. And he hits it, so a 5-2 to two lead in the early going. This is a Travis team that has struggled mightily uh, getting the ball into the basket. So now Wagner fading to the corner. He drives in, going to hit the floater. Shot's no good. Anderson struggling to hit from the floor. Through the first two minutes, Mugisha there on the rebound. Torres is the one to bring it up. Francis defending. They've got Santos in the game now. Stuck outside, they get it over to Bryant. Travis looking for something to do with it. Francis applying the pressure on the outside. They get away from it. Now looking. Travis working it around the perimeter. Got a little bit of wonky spacing here. Everyone kind of tramped on one side. Now, late Langley with a big block. 
on the driving player. He kicks it ahead to Blackerby. Bennett going to slow down and pull up for three. That's no good. Rebound too long for Francis. Jack wanted to push off on the rebound, and Torres is coming the other way. So through three minutes, Anderson still yet to score a basket. They've got two free throws from Whitlow. Francis reaching in. Hands up as the player loses it out of bounds. Bazarian there to clear it away. Now Wagner going to take it himself, and he is fouled from behind by Bryant. So Michael head of the line to shoot two. Three for three from the foul line or the Trojans so far. Mike can't connect on that one. But brings it two within two. Anderson applying heavy pressure to the ball handler when they bring it up the court. Francis picking up the offensive player, killing his dribble there. Now they get it back outside to Bryant. Bryant working left. Working it around the perimeter here. Not looking to get any penetration yet. Here's they get it over to Torres. Torres driving in, loses it. Bazarian there to take it away. Now Wagner lobs it ahead to Blackerby, who lobs it back to Francis. Some beautiful movement from the Trojans. And this is going to be a foul uh, against Travis. So Francis will head to the line for a pair of free throws with a chance to tie it off or tie it up. Anderson still has yet to score a basket. Derek Armour getting ready to check in. Seven, or the second guy off the bench, Ben Bazarian, showing off uh, some, some good defensive plays here in his minutes. Did pick up that blocking foul, though. As Langley and Black are going to check out. So the 5 4 Anderson are Francis, Armour, Price, Wagner, and Bazarian. It slides, I assume, Francis over to the center position uh, on offense. He is the biggest guy out there on the court, and you could probably do quite a bit in the pick and roll with Wagner as the uh, as the main ball handler in that, as Francis has the screener. But now Travis stuck with it almost to three seconds. They get a three off. The shot's no good from Santos. Rebound batted around into the hands of Bryant. Now Wagner there to take it away, and he's going to kick it ahead to himself, diving on the floor, just scoops it over to Francis, but that's going to be out of bounds. A lot of contact on that. No foul called uh, for either side. But we have a 5-5 five five game halfway through the first. Anderson getting everything from the foul line. As that's knocked out of bounds, it'll stay here. Of course, some great experience for some of these young guys for Travis if um, with, with, uh, with these COVID situations with the freshman and sophomore is able to get a little bit more playing time as it's another steal for Anderson. Price up ahead. He's going to get a layup on the other end. Gets it to go. That matches his high from last game. Price usually gives the Trojans about a bucket per game in the first half. Some, some good game experience at the varsity level for some of these young players. Is Bazarian there again to get a deflection and knock it out of bounds. Ben, active hands. And that, by the way, going to be the first lead of the game for Anderson. And their first made basket, Corey Price. The first field goal for Anderson. 3.20 to go, and Travis is going to go ahead and call a timeout. It'll just be a 30-second timeout, so I think we're just going to go ahead and keep it right here. Mike Wagner with one point right now for Anderson. Whitlow, Price, and Francis all have two. Cody Bryant is the leading scorer for Travis. He had the uh, picked up the and one bucket over Bazarian. So he's got three. Saul's also hit a couple of free throws, I believe. So really, both teams uh, really having a hard time putting the ball into the basket as now Donahoe going to check in for Francis, and it's bench lineup plus Wagner. It's Price, Bazarian, Donahoe, and Armour, along with the point guard. They're getting it in. Brian inbounds to Torres. Price defending. Torres gets around him. He's going to take it through the basket. Wagner hands up. But Torres gets his first basket of the night. The Wagner over to Bazarian, pushing the pace. He tries to dump it off to Donahoe. Liam wasn't quite ready for it. Now Travis on the floor, and they're going to go ahead and call a timeout. 
Rebels able to tie the game up on the other end. And it's a full timeout here. So 7-7. Seven, seven. Going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. We've got more Trojan basketball for you on Vibe Live right after this. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back in out of the timeout. Travis with the ball, it's a tie game. Anderson rocking with the same lineup that they had in before the timeout. Bazarian, active hands again, nearly poking that one free. Wagner and he being quick out on the perimeter tonight here. It's Mugisha, dishes it over to Torres. Now Torres working on Wagner, he's gonna cross to his left, spins, tries to go right at Donahoe. Liam with a good job just uh, knocking that ball out of his hands. Now Price lobbing it ahead to Bazarian. Ben going to kick drive in, kicks to the corner for Wagner, left wide open. Wagner can't get it to go. Donahoe there on the rebound. He has it tapped away on the uh, on the pass out. They get it back to Wagner in the corner. Now back up top for Bazarian, and Ben wisely slows it down. Two minutes left here in the quarter. Hand off to Price, now fading to the corner is Bazarian. He's going to drive in, gets stuck, kicks to the corner. Now Armour left open. He's going to try a three. That's no good off the back of the rim, and it's Torres coming down with the rebound. So the offensive struggles continue for the Trojans here in the first quarter. We're under two minutes. They've only got one field goal. So here's Wagner defending, hand straight up, pokes it away. Now back out to the corner. It's Saul's driving in, working on Donahoe. He steps back. Now Wagner trying to get a hand on it. It's off the hands of Mugisha and now out of bounds. It'll be Trojan basketball. And we have another set of substitutions. We'll see who uh, stays in. Donahoe's going to be the only player to stay in. Dale going to get in, Campbell Duncan going to get in, Francis back, as well as Gill. I'm talking to Coach Pittsford before the game, this is pretty much what uh, he expected. It's just going to be a lot of minutes for the bench lineups here. And he's uh, he's going right to him before he even lets the starters get a little bit of a lead as Francis tries from outside, and he finally knocks one down. From the perimeter, Anderson was struggling from out there, and Francis kind of Loosens up those nerves a little bit. It's 10 to seven, Anderson with her largest lead of the ball game. Francis defending outside. It's all the way to the rim for Torres and he loses it out of bounds, or uh, misses the shot and it's tapped out of bounds by Anderson. So it will stay here. Trojan faithful not happy about that one. They think it was off of Travis, but it will stay here nonetheless. Bryant gonna be the one to inbound it. He gets it into Sauls. Sauls two points on the game. Francis defending. Campbell Duncan contesting the shot. It's no good. Rebound taken away by Francis. A lot of contact as Jack turns it over. Now a kick to the corner for Sauls. They're really letting a play out here tonight. Shot's no good. Rebound hits the floor. Gill has it. And again, a no foul call. Gill's being grabbed. Now here's Dale. Kicks to the corner for Francis. Jack going to try and get another one to go. And he does. Jack Francis from downtown. He's up to eight points. Pittsford incensed right now as... I can understand it. Anderson has been uh, the victim of a lot, a lot of contact and not a lot of calls. However, they do still have the lead. It's 13-7. Here's Bryant as Gill pokes it away. And they're going to call a foul on him there. Is Donahoe going to sub out for Blackerby? So, three team fouls apiece. 20, round up, 27 seconds left in the quarter. Now here's Hernandez. Dale defending. 
kicks to the corner. Campbell Duncan knocked it out. Uh, well, he, Campbell Duncan tipped it into the hands of Bryant, and Bryant knocked it out. So it's Anderson Ball, 15.0 left on the clock, as Francis is going to be the one to take it up. Blackerby in as well. Gill going to be out there on the corner with some guys who can stretch the floor for Anderson. But be on the lookout for Blackerby at the bottom corner here. Here's Francis, hands it off to Gill. Instead, they'll go right back to Jack, see if he can keep it hot. No good. Rebound knocked out of bounds, and it will go the other way with .14 left on the clock. So Francis unable to get the heat check to go. He still has two threes in the quarter and has given the Trojans a six-point lead after frame number one. So in district, the Trojans still can't quite figure out the first quarter because we've had plenty of, of odd ones here. They lead it by six, 13 to seven. Jack Francis doing the bulk of the scoring for Anderson is that's something we've grown accustomed to. He's already outpaced himself from last game. He scored seven, he already has eight here. Through the first quarter, there's 40 seconds left in between. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back with the second quarter. You're listening to Trojan Hoops on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Back in for Q2. <laughs> Trojans going with the starters. Whitlow still on the bench. He's over talking to, uh, I believe, the, the trainer here. So hope he's okay. But he is uh, out of the game here for the moment. Fred Dale going to be in in his place along with the starters. Wagner, Francis, Langley, and Blackerby. Trojans lead it by six, eight minutes to go here until halftime. As that one's poked right away by Jack, and he's going to get a run out. And he's going to dunk it in on the other end. Jack Francis finally able to set his feet and get that launch pad as he puts the Trojans ahead by eight. He's into double figures already with ten. Now driving in, losing it is Bryant. Dale clears it away. Now Blackerby looking ahead. He's got his eyes up. He kicks to the corner. That's a good pass to find Francis. Jack going to pull up on the short corner. The shot's no good. The rebound's going to fall in to, to uh, Hernandez here. Trojans still, they lead it 15-7. to seven. after having a couple missed dunks earlier in the season. Francis able to put together his best looking one yet as Langley reaching out and taking that one away with one hand. Now here's Francis going to take it to the basket himself. Gets the lay. Two more for Jack. 12 points already. And now Anderson up to a 10-point lead at 17-7. Just like that. Under seven minutes to go here in the half. Travis having a very hard time cracking this Trojan press as they really like to trap uh, way out on the perimeter here. They're kind of easing up on it a little tonight, but Travis, just with so much inexperience uh, on the court for them, they're having a hard time solving these uh, lockdown perimeter defense from the Trojans. as a little bit of frustration showing from them now. They kick it to the corner, and that's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here. And some of that youth showing for Austin Travis. Brian in the corner, Langley left him open, and he can't make him pay. Rebound high and knocked out of bounds. It looked like it was off of number 23, Bay Velasquez, but instead it will stay on this end. Santos coming in for the Rebels. <laughs> Running Rebels here. They lob it in, they get it to Sauls. Six minutes left here in the half. Wagner defending hands straight up. That's some good defense for Mike Wagner, but it doesn't matter. Saul's able to knock down the basket. He's got four points. Pass ahead to Blackerby. Bennett avoids the contact from Bryant and gets his first bucket of the game. Puts the lead back to 10. It's 19 to nine. Driving in Wagner, pokes it free, but Travis able to recover. Now Saul's takes the screen. Wagner doing a good job of 
coming under it. Screen coming on the backside. Wagner doing an excellent job just uh, making it hard on Sauls as Blackerby doing a good job staying in front and forcing a tough shot from Hernandez and he knocks it down. Now pushing ahead is Mike Wagner looking at Langley in the corner. Nate going to put it on the floor one time, take it to the hoop and score. That's tough to stop Nate Langley when he gets ahead of steam. Just does a good job of contorting his body. And finishing through contact. But off the three from Hernandez. Anderson has it back down to a nine point lead. Now they're gonna fire away again. Saul's high arcing off the glass. Rebound batted away to Bryant. Langley able to come away. Now they get it up to Francis. Now Jack gonna try and a little more forceful this time. He misses it. And they pass it across to Hernandez. Hernandez is going to step back and pass it into Sauls. He's got a little bit of height on Wagner, but he's going to pull it out to the perimeter anyway. He's going to pull up over two defenders. Shot no good, but the ball goes right back to him. Francis blocks it. Rebound saved right to Francis. And is there, are they going to call a push-off on Blackerby? Yeah, they're going to call a push-off on Bennett. got a timeout on the floor. Didn't see whether or not it was full or 30 seconds. Looks like it's just going to be 30 seconds, so we'll go ahead and keep it here. Anderson being led by their senior, Jack Francis. We'll go ahead and pull over to Travis. I know that um, this is a, a higher point total than they're used to seeing this early in games. They've only scored 21 against McCallum, 13 against Crockett. So they were already knocking on the door of that low. So a much better start for Travis here in the first half. Both teams getting ready to come out of the huddle. Trojans already out. They've got some substitutions here. It'll be Wagner, Francis, Langley, Bazarian, and Gill. Four team fouls for the Trojans, 4.33 to go in the half. They get it in. It's up top to Santos. Bazarian picking him up. He gets it to Sauls on the perimeter. They've been riding his uh, ball handling a lot all night. And they get it to Velasquez. Velasquez takes it to the paint. No good. Rebound goes to Sauls over Francis. He turns and spins. No good. Rebound battered away. And Wagner there to take it. Splits a double team. Now pushing into the front court. Dishes it off to Bazarian. Ben setting his feet in the corner. Can't get it to go. Rebound battered away. And into the hands of Velasquez. Under four to go here in the half. As he pushes it to the corner for Bryant, smaller Bazarian on him. Now pass into the corner. Driving in is Hernandez. His shot is no good, but he's gonna get a foul. As Anderson getting a little bit frustrated here as they're gonna get Gill on that one. Here's Hernandez, not a lot of rotation on that ball, but he has a way of knocking him down. He's got four points. So he goes one for two, makes it 21 to 13. Anderson with an eight point lead. They get it to Francis, 3.30 to go. Cesarian is looking for Francis, wasn't there. They get it back outside to Wagner. Langley, pass fake, he's gonna take it in. Now kicking it over, and that's gonna be a blocking foul going against Travis. Bazarian was left open in the corner again. This is the fourth team foul going against Travis. Five on Anderson, so the Trojans just with one more to give. Wagner looking for Jack. Jack gets it right underneath the basket and knocks it down. That's that inbounds play that's been so effective all season. Francis up to 14. Now Saul's pushing. Jack doing a good job of cutting off his drive. It's a 10 point lead again, 23 to 13. Now they swing it to the corner. Now driving in, Langley able to poke it away from Velasquez. Now back outside for Bryant. Bryant Wagner defending him. And they get it into Saul. Saul's driving in, hop steps around Langley. Kind of got stuck and had to force the shot up. Now Gill lobs it up to Francis. Jack putting it on the floor, stepping back, back to Gill. Gill pump fake. And he'll reset back outside to Francis. Jack going to take. 
That shot's well short. Rebound to the floor. Gill dives for it, gets on the ground and picks it up. And it looks like we will have a jump ball. Not sure of the possession arrow, and it will stay Trojan basketball. So Donahoe in for Langley now. Langley, as good as ever in his uh, short run tonight, you're getting a lot of backup big minutes here. As they get it into Gill. Gill going to catch and shoot. That's an air ball. Francis tries to save it, does. And that one went deep into the court before anyone saved it. Now it's a four on five for Travis, but Francis now back into the play. Here's Sauls, Bazarian defending. He's going to step back. Doing a lot of dribbling, he kind of loses the ball. Donho trying to stay in front of him. Wagner pokes it free, and Santos is there to recover it. Anderson doing an excellent job of uh, getting loose balls, but Travis, I feel like they've gotten a lot of uh, fortunate bounces here to keep uh, keep the ball in play for them. But that one's knocked out of bounds. It will once again stay here. Velasquez to inbound it now for Travis. Pass in. Here's Sauls trying to get it to somewhere. Bazarian going to have to save it, and he can't quite do it. Bryant is the one to come up with a loose ball. Now back outside, it's Torres. He's going to work on Gill a little bit. Now directing traffic gets it outside to Bryant, and that is where Travis is going to reset and try and get into some offense here. Under two minutes to go here in the quarter. Anderson leads it by 10. Now going behind the back, that's a nifty move from Hernandez, and he turns it over. Bazarian now pushing into the front court, dishes it off to Gill. That's a nice pass. Now no look from Bazarian, and a nice finish from Gill. He's got two. Trojans lead it 25 to 13. Francis nearly just a straight up takeaway, but now it's Sauls trying to work on Wagner. He loses it into the hands of Francis. Now Jack going behind the back with it and take it into the front court himself. He's bumped, can't finish, but he'll head to the line for two. Jack Francis already with 14. And nobody else on the team has more than two. So Francis to the line. Hits the first. Was Aaron going to check out some good minutes for him tonight, especially on the defensive side? A lot of times in basketball, uh, people see when, when you get a smaller defender on you, they, uh, they will a lot of the time just try and go right at that guy simply because of the size of Sauls kind of illustrates that point going right at Price. He misses the turnaround. It's a two-on-one for Wagner and Francis. Mike just going to take this one himself, gets the bucket. Kind of freezing the defender in the backcourt. But Bazarian is working with a lot of guys that are taller than him tonight, and he has held his own and forced a lot of loose balls and uh, a lot of steals for him already just in this first half as Hernandez is going to fire the shot. That's no good. Rebound out of bounds, and it will... Looks like it'll stay down here. So yeah, I really want to commend um, what a lot of these guys have done coming off the bench defensively here. Travis really struggling to to get into much offense. They've hit some shots, they've hit some tough shots, and they've done uh, they've done well when they've gotten to the foul line. But Anderson generally uh, doing a very good job defensively tonight as they have all season. Now here's Velasquez getting into the corner for Bryant. Wagner doing a good job staying with it. He just pokes it out of bounds. It'll stay here. Wagner just has a way of working his hands uh, and just finding where the ball is, just uh, just timing it up very nicely so as not to pick up a, a reach on a, on a call like that. They do get it in. Black will be defending. Now back outside, Price, Donahoe, Wagner, Francis, and Black be, are the group out now for the Trojans. Ten seconds left in the half. Here comes Sauls. Trojans lead it by 16. Saul's crossing over on Donahoe to his left, back to the center of the court. He's going to try and free himself up for a deep three, and that is well off. Update the scoreboard. It's 29-13. Trojans have the lead. Jack Francis leading the way for the Trojans with 16 points. Ronald Saul's and Jaden Hernandez, four points apiece for Travis. And with that, going to go ahead and take a, another break on the broadcast. Going to... 
be back towards the end of halftime to, to give some thoughts on the game and talk about some players. But for now, we're going to go ahead and send it to break, but not before we thank our sponsor on tonight's broadcast for Anderson Basketball. It's Harry Breen and Herman and Enco Tech, your logo sponsors. I want to thank them for everything that they do for this Trojan program. And for us at Vipe Live, you already know, it's Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. So with that, going to go ahead and sign off. Going to go ahead and throw it to break. We've got seven minutes up on the clock for halftime. We'll be back in about three or four of those minutes. But for now, I want to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. I'm Jack Farrell. We will have the second half of action coming up right after this. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE dot Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313. Again, another. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at vipevype.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 
through 16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back out of the half. Trojans lead it. 29-13 over Travis. Really came alive there in the second quarter. That first quarter for the Trojans, especially in district play, has been has been a little tough for them. They really usually like to give themselves a few minutes to kind of feel out an opponent. But at the same time, it uh, sometimes it, it really feels like they're just letting an opponent linger. But tonight it's been all Jack Francis for Anderson. He's got 16 of his team's 29. Nobody else has more than two. Excuse me, um, that's not true. Mike Wagner has three. He had a uh, one for two from the line, and then he had a basket right there at the end of the of the quarter. But Francis with 16, Wagner with three, Blackerby, Gill, Price, Whitlow, and Langley all with two. We've seen a lot of the bench units uh, here today. I've been pleased from what I've seen from Donahoe, Bazarian, and Gill uh, in their minutes here. Um, not to say that these other guys off the bench haven't been playing well. It's these are just the ones that I have seen uh, kind of make some standout plays here in that first half. Should be a, a lot of time for, for some of those guys as we move forward into the second half here. Just about 90 seconds left on the clock. Anderson doing a good job defensively, uh, kind of struggling to hit some shots on offense, but towards the end of the second quarter, that kind of went away a little bit. Francis came in, knocked down a pair of triples uh, to, to really get them going offensively in this game. But, uh, yeah, it's a quick first half, just about 30, 35 minutes. And got some homework for all you basketball fans tonight. It's the return of my favorite rookie in the NBA tonight at 9 p.m., Alperen Shangun for the Houston Rockets. He hasn't played in a couple weeks with an ankle sprain, and he's back tonight. And he is a uh, must-watch basketball, big Shangun guy. So if you've got league pass... Or uh, if you've got AT&T, it's Rockets time. And I don't always advocate for watching the Rockets because they're pretty bad, and only a fan could really stomach it. But it's Shen Goon season, so it's, it has is, it is, it is moved from unwatchable to must-watch. Uh, no. <laughs> but if you don't got plans, maybe uh, everyone here, we, could, we're, we are down south. We could... We could uh, who, who's hosting the after party? Where are we going for the after party? We are down off Old Torf. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but it looks like Whitlow will be done for the night. He sustained an injury uh, early in that game. Early in this game, excuse me. Hopefully he is okay. He's not over on the bench right now. Imagine he's still back in the locker room being tended to, but it will be starters into the game, minus Whitlow, of course, plus Brad Dale. So that's who the Trojans are going to be rocking with to get started here. We'll see what Fred can do in his, uh, so his run with the starters here. Now, it will be Travis Ball to uh, get started, and they pass it into the backcourt. Nearly thrown away, but Torres able to track it down. And here comes Whitlow back to the bench. So it looks like he is okay. He's walking on his own power. He's not really favoring anything, but I imagine if he is at all banged up, they'll go ahead and sit him down for the remainder of the night given the uh, status of the game at this point. Here comes Brian attacking Francis. Jack doing a great job staying in front of him, and eventually Brian just lost it. Speaking of losing it, Blackerby unable to handle that pass. It was a little bit behind him, but now Travis coming the other way with a 16-point deficit. They get it to the corner. Dale doing a good job of not letting that hit his feet, but it goes off of his legs, so it's a legal play. He can just take that as a steal for himself. Now Langley outside, he's going to put it on the floor, take it all the way to the basket. Scoop shot's no good, but he gets his own board and the follow, but I think they're going to go ahead and call the foul on the first shot. So I think he'll get free throws for this. And he will. Third quarter getting started here, 7-17 to go. Foul is going to go against, I believe they're going to whistle Santos. First free throw. Is true for Langley. He's up to three points. 7-17 left in the third quarter. Can't get the second. Dale can, though. And Fred's now going to head in the line for a pair of free throws himself. 
coming off a game. He had two points. <laughs> His teammates are excited about this. It's QB1 to the charity stripe. Knocks down the first free throw. So that free throw plus the Langley free throw gives him 31. Dale's going to try and make it 32. He can't, but Langley is going to get his own offensive rebound, and that's going to be a jump ball. Nice job taking that away for Jaden Hernandez, but that does keep it right down here for Anderson. As Travis did start the half with the ball. So Langley heads to the line, misses the second free throw as Francis right underneath the basket, misses the shot, so take the assist away from Wagner, but give the points to Francis. So yeah, Langley gets fouled, misses the second. Dale gets the rebound, misses the second. Langley gets the rebound right back and is tied up for a jump ball. And they get Francis not on the inbound, but on the follow from his own miss. So 33 now, 13. Trojans have pushed it to 20. That's once again their largest lead of the game so far. Here's Torres, two points. He's got Dale on him out on the perimeter. He's going to go right at him, take it to the basket, just kind of a hook shot behind his head. Now Francis passes it ahead to Blackerby, who passes it ahead to Dale. Two steps and a deuce. Freddie up to three points now. Now here's Hernandez kicking it to the corner, and Dale there to take it away off the tip. Now another lob ahead to Blackerby. Bennett going to take it in. He's hit, but no foul call, but Bennett is going to take the two points. That's his second bucket of the game. 37-13, Anderson out and running. Francis pokes it out of bounds but it will go Travis as well. Here's Hernandez, kicks it over to Sauls. Langley picking up. It's the thing, at, at, at any moment, Anderson has five guys that can guard the perimeter on the court. Switch on to Blackerby. Puts his shoulder into him and he'll just have to retreat. Now kicks to the corner for Torres. Now truly into the corner actually for Hernandez. Torres, and once again, Santos. Working it around, loose ball, knocked away, and this is gonna be over the over and back. No Anderson player touched it, and that is the call on the court. 5.32 to go, Anderson is pushing that lead ever further. They have an 11 to nothing start to this second half. It's 26 13 or no, excuse me, it's a it's an eight to nothing start for Anderson uh, to come out of the break. They let it 29-13 at half, and they're gonna go ahead and call a uh, 30 second timeout. It was 29-13, it's now 37-13 off the backs of some increased scoring from Fred Dale and Nate Langley and Bennett Blackerby. Francis with one bucket in the half as well. He's up to 18. His career high is uh, I believe 30. <laughs> He might not uh, play enough to, to score that kind of that kind of number, though. But he has been really the only guy to get it going tonight for Anderson. A couple guys uh, <laughs> sort of creeping up. Blackerby now up to four, but Francis still miles away with 18. It will be Wagner on the inbound. Mike has played himself an excellent game, especially on defense. They get it into Francis. Back to Wagner. Now Wagner looking. He's going to take it into the corner. Skip it across the court for Dale. Now into the corner. A wide open bet of Blackerby. And he can't connect. Rebound underneath to Dale. Dale going to go up strong and gets it to go. Fred Dale showing off. Five points here in the quarter. Now behind the back. And that's going to be off of his own feet, it looks like. But no, it'll stay here. I'm... The, mm, Torres, Torres kicked that out of bounds, but it's uh, it's going to stay down here. And after a discussion, they keep that call on the floor, and Francis takes it right away, but he was out of bounds. Uh, no, they're going to call a foul on Francis. That's just number one on Jack. Now looking to get it in again. Looking for Francis, or uh, looking for Santos. Francis had a chance to take that one away. But now here comes Torres spinning in, losing the ball. Now diving to the floor to get it is Santos. And we will have another jump ball, and that'll keep it here.
It's been a wacky uh, <laughs> few minutes here. Under five to go here in the third. So already two jump balls in the third. Hernandez stolen by Langley. Nate into the front court, over to Wagner. Lob up to Nate. Nate with the alley-oop finish. Langley, five points in the ball game. Mike Wagner lobbing it up to the big man as Anderson pushes that lead ever more. Now here's Torres. As he's going to lose it, rebound, or taken away by Blackerby. It's up to Wagner. Mike, easy layup on the other end. As he'll take that field goal. They're up to 43 now on those two extra baskets for the Trojans. It's 43 to 13. Francis, another poke, and he can't save it before it goes out of bounds. But he gets it right to Blackerby. He's got a, a way of saving the ball. Here's Arias checking in. We haven't seen him yet today. Lob across, and watch the feet, watch the feet. Ooh, <laughs> very nearly backcourt. I think his heel might have clipped the line, but we'll give it to him. It is a 30-point game. Now kick to the corner. Saul's with it. Working on Blackerby, crosses to his right, trying to spin and free himself up. Doing a great job not to drag that pivot foot, and they're going to get Blackerby for a foul there. That's a, that's a bailout call. As Blackerby is going to pick up another foul. That'll be sure and finish out the play. That's just uh, that's two on Bennett. Can't give a guy free throws after you defend him so well for an entire possession, but it happens. And Sauls is going to step to the line, and he's been pretty good from the charity stripe here tonight. As that is the first points of the uh, of the half on those two free throws for Travis. So a 14-0 run for Anderson to start the half as Dale is going to lose it going inside, and they're going to say off of Travis. That one looked to me like it might have been off of Fred, so a lucky break for Anderson getting the ball back underneath. It's 43-15. to It's Wagner. Oh, he can't get the shot to go, and batted away by a couple Trojans into the hand of a couple Rebels. They're looking for something to do with it. Kicks to the corner. RES can't find it. Dale there to steal it away. Now Fred going to push. Up ahead to Wagner, who finds Langley streak into the basket. He takes the contact and gets it to go. Nate Langley, another bucket. He's up to seven. Now here's Sauls. Francis trying to take it away. They lob it over to Hernandez. Francis defending him. He knocks it away, but Travis there to recover. Here's Sauls. Blackerby staying in front of him, and they're going to get another foul on Bennett on the same kind of play. It's going to be the third on Bennett. Now he's stuck in a little bit of foul trouble, but they'll keep him on the court. The starter's getting a lot more run here to start this half as the free throw's up and good for Sauls. Make it 45 to 16. Wagner pushing it for Anderson. Saul's up to seven points. That's a team high. Now Blackerby going to catch and fire. Rims out. And a tough night for Bennett. As he's just marred with a little bit of inconsistency from time to time. He still does have a pair of basket, uh, baskets. He's got four. But he does have three fouls. Saul's nearly loses it. Francis there to try and take it away. Pokes it away again. And that's going to be a double dribble. Put it on the floor again. 45-16, two minutes left in the third quarter. Trojan basketball. It's a 14 nothing run to start the half for Anderson. And we are into blowout territory now. As here's Langley, skips to the corner for Jack. From deep, can't get it to go. Rebound Langley. 
can get the assist, so he just wants the basket. But Packerby there to follow Langley's miss. And now, just good to see one go down. Can often just be all that it takes is to see one go in and he can start firing away on some of these deep balls that we have seen him connect on a very good percentage of this season. Francis and Blackerby both some pretty uh, pretty efficient scorers for Anderson, and that is a very nice thing to have in your roster that you can have two guys that can kind of go get their own buckets. Of course, Langley, when you put him uh, with position underneath, he's very hard to stop because this one's sent over to Torres and the possession stays alive. Dale defending a minute and 10 left in the quarter. Now back outside Hernandez, and that's another one good for him. Now Wagner into Francis. Jack going to take it to the paint. Floater off the glass is good. Francis up to 20 points now. As Francis is going to take it right away and gets this layup to go. Francis up to 22. Now Travis going to slow it up. 40, uh, 45 seconds left in the quarter. Now here's Torres going right into the chest of Dale, and they're going to get a, a foul on Dale. Wow, that was called that was called well after the play. It looked like they were just going to let that go. Is Dale going to head to the line for his? Uh, or excuse me, not Dale. Uh, Christian Torres is going to head to the line for some foul shots. That's the first foul of the game going against Dale, who's got five points today. Free sh uh, free throws, good. That one also drops. So he's up to four. They're up to 21. Anderson still with a 30-point lead. 25 seconds left in the quarter. Francis up to 22 points. Could leave him in and try and pick up a career high. Well, here's Wagner. 14 seconds left. Looking for Blackerby. He gets it to him. Now Bennett going to take it into the center court. Working around a screen, he's going to take it baseline, pulls up, can't get it. Langley tries to tap it up with both hands. Nate going to take it in strong, gets it to go at the buzzer. Nate Langley showing off his strength underneath, gets his uh, layup to go right there at the buzzer. It's 53 to 21. After three, Nate Langley up to nine points. He's the closest Trojan not named Jack Francis to double figures. Jack with 22, Blackerby with six, Wagner with five, along with Dale, Gill, Price, and Whitlow all have two. But with that, it is 21 to 53 after three quarters. Going to go ahead and send it to a break, and we will come back and have more fourth quarter action for you. Imagine we're going to get to see a lot of bench guys here down the stretch. So come back and see some of the depth that this Anderson team has to offer right after this. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. It's bench mob time. Campbell Duncan and Corey Price getting ready to check in to uh, send this ball in bounds. It's Bazarian, Gill, and Donahoe in as well. Trojans lead it by 32. After three, they get it to Duncan now into Donahoe. Headed to the basket. Shot's no good. Trying to get his own miss. No, no chance on that one. And now it's Travis pushing the other way. And they nearly lose it out of bounds. An unforced error. And uh, 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 ball on the floor. Who wants it? Nobody wants it. Hernandez takes it. He steps back into the corner, now back outside for Torres. It's been a wonky start. Wonky first 30 seconds as now. I'm going to take a breather in at Santos. <laughs> Here's Hernandez working around a screen. Zarian defending him, chasing him off the perimeter. He goes behind the back, kicks it over to the corner. They were looking for Sauls. Nearly got away from him. Price trying to poke it away, and that's going to go out of bounds off of Ronald there. So it'll stay. 
Trojan basketball pushed in the other direction. 7-13 left in the ball game. It will be bench units from here on out for the Anderson Trojans. Hand off to Gill. Looking for Duncan in the corner. He's going to take a screen from Donahoe. Now into the corner for Ben Bazarian. That's just short. Rebound up for Donahoe. He's looking to get it. Oh, and he throws it off of his own teammate, Bazarian. Couldn't quite time up the catch there. It bounced off his knee and out of bounds. Couldn't see uh, who it went off of from here, but we're going to get it off of the Trojans. 53-21 is still the score. Now, minute played here in the fourth, 6.57 to go. Now here's Sauls working around the perimeter. He's got Donahoe on him. Now outside for Torres with Price in defense. Now they kick it underneath to Sauls. Bazarian, not much he can do against all that size, but the foul it looked like wasn't on Ben. It got on the help defense from Campbell. So Duncan is uh, going to pick up the foul there. That's five on Anderson, so they've only got one more to give. Just two on Travis Anderson. Hasn't really gotten the benefit of the whistle tonight, but uh, we've seen that time and time again that when a team gets up to such a big lead, you kind of stop getting calls. You st well, that's not true. You kind of stop getting uh, like 50-50 calls, which I think is, is I mean, if you want to be a real rules guy, it's probably not quote unquote fair, but it's understandable, no? And then, my, and then your dad says, life's not fair. Whatever. <laughs> you get it into Donahoe. Now kick to the corner for Duncan. He's going to get a shot off. From the corner, no good, too strong. Rebound Donahoe. He's out there fighting for all these loose balls. Is Bazarian going to take all the way to the basket? He's hit hard. He got clotheslined. And they almost didn't give him the whistle. That's what, well, yeah. See? <laughs> not getting those 50-50 calls, but you, you, you get the clotheslines. So now Battle head to the line. He's looking for his first points. And that's going to be five fouls, it looks like, on Cody Bryant. Until he's frustrated, but just uh, with COVID and everything, this is a Travis team that has not really been set up uh, to succeed in the short term. Just kind of a tough break to, to just kind of force these. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a, it's a real trial by fire thing for, for, for a young player to have to come in and, and play at the varsity level. Especially, I mean, it's, it's an Anderson team that hasn't lost a, a district game in two years as Bazarian goes two for two from the line. They haven't uh, lost a district game since realignment as that's going to be an air ball from Saul's rebound Donahoe is... He, he might have 10 rebounds in just like these two minutes. As that's a nice pass from Corey Price to Campbell Duncan. A gorgeous feed from CP3 to Campbell Duncan. A pass ahead. Price now picking up the defense on Hernandez. Now back outside for Sauls. 57-22. Duncan doing a good job on uh, Sauls there. Under six to go now. As Travis is kind of working it around the perimeter, trying to get some penetration. They're struggling to. As Sauls is going to go at Bazarian. Ben doing a good job. Donahoe there to pick up. Ben doing a nice job of uh, finding the open man on the double. As here's Donahoe. He's going to go down. And ball batted around. Bazarian comes away with it. He's going to go to the ground with it. Price is going to take it away. Now it's a two-on-one for Anderson. Price is going to take it to the basket, and he's going to be fouled. <laughs> 4.52 left. Price heads to the line for two. He's already got two points in the game. As that's going to be too strong and no good. Anderson going to bring in some substitutions. Bennett Blackerby going to check in, and I like this. I think this... Uh, I think this might be our chance to see Bennett kind of run some point coming in in garbage time here. But we'll see. I want to see how, uh, how Bennett's used because I don't think Coach Pittsburgh's going to bring Bennett off the bench uh, 
a starter off the bench in, in, in minutes like this if he doesn't have a plan for him. I'm excited to see what that is. Or maybe you just asked him, do you want to play a few more minutes? And he said, yeah. You never know. Price makes a one for two on the other end, by the way. So he's up to three points, and that's going to be another foul. So we're starting to slow down uh, our pace a little bit. A lot of fouls. So that first one no good. And that was it for Anderson on fouls to give, so it'll be bonus moving forward for Travis. One for two for Vincent Mugisha. That's his first point. Yeah, and Bennett bringing the ball up. They get it over to Alexander, now into the corner for Hull. Hull dumps it off to Armour. Armour into the air, now back outside. Ooh, almost a turnover there as Price able to, ooh, once again almost a turnover. Price now stuck with it. Going to get it over to Blackerby. Bennett going to put it on the floor, pull up from the baseline. He wanted contact. There was contact, but probably not going to get a call like that at this point in the game as that's another miss for Anderson. Coming the other way, it's 58 to 23. Here's Sauls isolating out on Hull. Hull going to try and stay in front of him. Sauls does a good job getting to the basket, splitting the double team there as Price going to lose it over to Armour. That's a nice bounce for Anderson. Now up ahead, into the corner. Now Bennett going to get a chance to fire away from three. Can't get that to go. Rebound goes to Armour. Armour going to post up, take it to the basket. No good on the jump hook, and that's knocked out of bounds. And they're going to say it's off of Sauls, and it will stay here. We're getting Corey out and putting Jackson in. Blackerby going to be the one to inbound into Anderson. Most of the time, they put who they've got at point guard in uh, in a, the inbounder position. As here's Gill, another future face of Anderson basketball, I think, for Jackson Gill. As here is Blackerby gets the rebound, but he loses it. Rebound now rolling around on the floor, and it will be a timeout for Travis. It's 312, 58-23. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break with him. We've got more fourth quarter action. Three minutes, 12 seconds left. Coming up right after this. Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 30 13 not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. But takes the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Now it is time for where I thrived as a high school basketball player myself. Garbage time. That's an offensive term for it. Garbage time is still valuable time. It's real life game minutes where a game, uh, a result isn't hanging in the balance. It's a great chance for uh, some of your younger guys or some of your bench guys to come in and get some run. And A, it's fun for them. B, it's an excellent experience. So that's what we're dealing with now. Uh, especially look for Gill and Blackerby for Anderson as Bennett. Speak of the devil. Pulls down the rebound and once again gets it ahead to Gill. Armour gets it over to Alexander. And Andrew able to finish on the bucket. One of these days we're going to get everybody on the team a bucket in the same game. Just waiting for Derek, uh, Kalen, and Liam. Now into the corner. Good job for Bennett on the closeout. Gill pokes it away from his defender. Hernandez able to recover it. He's got seven points here tonight. Back outside. 
Armour defending. Trying to stay in front. You can give him a little bit of space on the perimeter. He's probably not going to shoot. And that's going to be a turnover out of bounds on the bad pass. Anderson basketball with under two minutes to go. They are still lively as ever on that bench. Up 62-23. It's a 37-point lead for the Anderson Trojans. As Colin Page not playing tonight, but ever the loud presence on the bench. Fading to the corner is Bennett Blackerby. He finally gets a three to fall. And just his body language, you can tell he really wanted that one. So Bennett up to nine. He's running the point a little bit here as we move down into the quarter as Jackson Gill going to go ahead and just pick up the foul as Price going to have to check in. Campbell Duncan also going to get ready to check in as we get Blackerby out of the game and Gill out of the game. So it's Price along with Campbell Duncan along with Andrew Alexander, Derek Armour, and Kalen Hall. It'll be free throws for Solves. It's a one and one with one, two, three remaining in the ball game. The first free throw is good. Sauls is flirting with double figures here tonight. And he can't hit it, so he will uh, be stuck there at nine as it's 63-24. As here's Hull, lobs it into Armour, back outside. Price going to fire away. That's no good. Rebound Hull. The follow is no good. Rebound taken away by Travis. 63-24, and they're just going to let him keep playing after that. I think Price probably should have been whistled for a foul, and now, yeah, they'll get Duncan on that one. Can't have two obvious fouls back-to-back, -back, can you? 102 left in the game. So... As we wind down, the front end of the one and one is no good. We're going to go ahead and look over at the Trojan schedule. They are going to pick up the win tonight to make it 18 and 8 and 5 and 0 in district play. And their next one will be on the road. Once again, another South Austin school. They're going to play Crockett, the only other 4 and 0 team in district, as Campbell Duncan airballs on the three. Now back outside for Price. Corey loses it, and they're going to call Travis on a foul. I think Corey just kind of fell. But. Only two uh, two more games before we flip back around and uh, and reset on our district schedule. And Anderson has two more teams, Crockett and McCallum, two of the two of the better teams that they're going to be playing in district. As we were saying before the foul, Crockett, the only other four and O team, as Price turns and spins and kicks it out to Hull. Kalen. Uh, comfortable just trying to dribble out the clock so I think that will be the final score is 63 to 24 Anderson going to improve the point then oh Travis going to fall to 0 and 5 for the Anderson Trojans as 15 seconds wind off the clock Jack Francis was the team high 22 points tonight one for two on dunks Bennett Blackerby nine points Nate Langley nine points five for Wagner and Dale three for Price and a bunch of twos for Duncan, Kazarian, Alexander, Hill, and Whitlow. Hopefully Mitchell will be good to go for the next game. He did exit tonight's contest uh, in the first quarter. We didn't see him uh, for the rest of the game. So hopefully he will, uh, he'll be all right moving forward. Anderson picking up the victory here. As we said, it was 63-24. to 24. And a big win for the Trojans as they head into, uh, I believe it's a three-day weekend, MLK, is on, uh, MLK Day on Monday. So that's a nice way for the Trojans to send it to the long weekend with a victory over a district opponent in Travis, a shorthanded district opponent in Travis. But Anderson will be on the road once again on Tuesday at Crockett, and then they will host McCallum at home on Friday, and then we will turn over the district schedule and have a game on the road at Lhasa. Anderson 1-0 against Lhasa on the year, 3-0 in the last two years. Looking to complete the 4-0 sweep there, but for now, we are going to go ahead and sign off on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. It was an excellent performance by the Trojans for about three and a half quarters after a, a little bit of a slow start, but still an excellent game for the Trojans. Way to take care of business and pick up another victory in district play. 63-24, I've been Jack Farrell. You have been listening to Anderson Trojan Basketball, and that's going to do it for us tonight. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in one more time. Have a great night and a great three-day weekend. Good night, everybody.